I'm going to do my best today to walk you through the typical process for a project and all the different steps that includes. The best way to feel confident about working on your first paid projects is to be prepared. So I'll give you a lot of different possibilities here in what I think is a logical order. Not all of them will apply to every project. Every client is different, every project is different, but I'll list everything I can think of and hopefully it will cover the majority of projects you are likely to encounter early on in your career. I'll use a typical magazine project as a baseline, but I'll suggest some options for working with independent clients and also bigger projects and international clients. If you think of any specific questions, as always, stick them in the comments. If you're wondering about something, other people will be too. Some of this will be obvious, I'm sure, but there's maybe something in here that you haven't thought of. The first thing is getting an inquiry for a project. This is when a client gets in touch with you to ask if you're available and if you're interested in working on their project. If you're a new illustrator, I'm guessing the answer will be yes. Usually this will be an email and some clients will send you all the details of the project in that first email. That's ideal because it's not wasting anyone's time. You can see right there and then what the dates are, what the budget is and what the article is about. You can more or less make a decision on the spot there. If you know you can do it, say yes. Maybe you want to see if you can negotiate the price a little. If the magazine sends you a price, it's probably not the maximum they're willing to pay. But if you're brand new, maybe you prefer to go with what they offer until you feel a bit braver, that's fine. Maybe you need to ask for a couple of extra days on the deadline or something like that. Usually that'll be absolutely fine. If it's urgent, they'll tell you. Sometimes a client will send details of the project without a price and ask you to send a quote. That's no easy task for a beginner. If this is a magazine, I would encourage you to ask what their budget is. They'll usually tell you. If it's an independent client or a bigger project, they might not be able to tell you. So you'll have to calculate a fee yourself. I'm not going to get into that here. There are a lot of factors to consider. Sometimes a client will get in touch and ask if you're available and won't give you any details about the project, either because they need you to sign an NDA you can watch my video about NDAs to learn about that. Or they just don't send you the details for some reason I don't understand. It just means you have to exchange four or five emails to get all the information you need when one email could have covered it. Generally speaking, the things that you need to find out are the key dates, sketches, deadline, the budget, what the project is about. Also, if the art director has seen a particular piece of your work that they like, that's useful for a style reference, especially if you have a few styles in your portfolio. And finally, technical details, sizes, dimensions, etc. I have a full checklist in my video, Your Project Checklist. Once you've got the information, negotiate the dates and the fee, you can confirm your interest or, if necessary, turn them down. Ideally, you want to make this first inquiry process as quick as possible to cut the risk of the art director getting a positive response from some other artist. You can bet that if they've asked you, they've either got some other artists as backups or they've already asked some other artists. So you're best to reply quickly. That doesn't mean you need to say yes immediately without thinking about it. It just means you should reply and start the conversation. As you get into bigger projects, you'll always be competing with other illustrators. So if you're the first to reply, maybe that'll help your chances. Maybe it won't, but it definitely can't hurt. You've also got to consider fair but competitive prices. Being the lowest priced illustrator isn't necessarily going to win you the project, but you also don't want to be twice as much as the competition. What a client might be willing to pay a very experienced illustrator probably won't be the same as what they would expect to pay an illustrator with little or no experience. That's not to say you should aim low with your fee, but you probably shouldn't expect to be paid the same as a very experienced artist. If you express your interest, they might give you the green light there and then. For bigger projects, they might take a couple of days to decide who they're going to go with. You should check in after a couple of days to see if they've made any decisions yet. Sometimes they'll go with someone else and they won't tell you, so it's better to find out for sure. If you don't get the job, keep your disappointment to yourself. It's nothing personal. Just respond saying, thanks for the consideration. I'd love to work with you sometime in the future. That's a mature, professional response. Assuming you do get the job, we'll move on to the boring paperwork. Vendor or contributor forms, contracts and tax. 
You can't always rely on the art director to send you paperwork up front before a job. Fair enough, we all forget things. But you need to know what's in the contract before you start the work. If there's any surprises in there, you don't want to find out after you've handed the work in. By bad surprises, I'm mainly talking about your copyright being assigned to the client. There are a couple of the big magazine publishers in the UK that have those kinds of terms in, and they publish a lot of different magazines. I actually think that these companies have different versions of contracts. I don't know that for sure, but if they send you one that has assignment of copyright terms in there, uh, tell them that you prefer a standard editorial license. That'll be usually 90 days exclusivity, or they might call it first publishing rights. For magazines, you should not be giving away the rights to your work. If they demand it, you have to make a decision if you're willing to give away copyright of your work for an unfair fee. I wouldn't recommend it because the company is taking advantage of you. But for someone that's trying to break into the industry, I can understand why a lot of new artists go along with it. Just know that the people that agree to terms like that teach clients that they can get away with it. So they'll keep doing it. But that's not your fault. It's their fault. I've got a couple of videos on contracts that you can take a look at um, that will talk you through some of the main points that you should become familiar with. If you're working with an independent client, they won't have a contract probably, so you should write down the terms in a document, including a description of the project, the client details, the price, and the license. That's what the illustration can be used for, the territory, uh, the country, or the area that uh, the illustration can be used in, and the duration, or how long the client can use the illustration for. I also have a video on licenses. Get them to agree to those terms by email or sign the document, then you both know exactly what is and isn't allowed. If you need to refer to it later, you've got it sorted out before the project starts. While you're doing this, you should ask the client if they need your details. If you're a new vendor or contributor for this client, they'll need your bank details to pay you at the very least. Magazines usually have a form to fill in, Get that out of the way at the start of the project too because it's really frustrating when you send your invoice at the end of a project and only then they remember to send you the form to fill in. It slows things down. And these forms are usually quite straightforward. Name, address, contact information, tax number, which for a US artist would probably be your social security number. I think if you're in the UK, you can use your national insurance number. Your bank details, including your SWIFT code and IBAN number if you're working in a foreign country. So if you don't know those, find out. If you're working in a foreign country, you should ask if they need any tax details from you. If you're not in the US but you're doing work in the US, you'll need to fill out a W8BEN form. In fact, I suggest you find that online and download it and fill it out anyway. You only need to do it once then remember to send it to any new clients you get in the US. You can also find guides online to help you complete those. If you are organized and you have a checklist, you don't need to rely on other people being organized. It makes life a lot simpler. If you're working with clients in foreign countries, they will pay you in their own currency. So if you're in France, but working with a client in the US, the client will pay you in US dollars. If that payment goes into your euro bank account, there will be a significant currency conversion charge to turn those dollars into euros. Banks charge relatively high amounts for converting currency, so that $300 fee, let's say, might have a big chunk of it taken out by the bank. To avoid that, there are services now where you can set up different currency accounts to receive payments in different currencies. I'm not familiar with any others, but I'm very familiar with a company called Wise, formerly TransferWise, if you set up an account with them for free, you can very easily and quickly open a euro account, a US dollar account, and a uh, GBP pounds account, even Australian dollars, Canadian dollars, and some others, I think. That means you'll be able to receive bank details from local banks in those countries. So you can add those to your contributor forms, which means the client can pay you in US dollars to a US dollar account, for example no currency conversion fee applied. Then you can choose when to convert it to your home currency within the WISE app at a fraction of the cost it would be for a bank to convert it. On a $300 payment, that might mean the difference between 30 euros and three euros. You can set up these accounts in TransferWISE uh, in about 10 minutes. You have to provide some ID for verification, which might take a couple of days. But over the course of a year, Working full-time, that will save you 
hundreds of dollars. I would definitely recommend it. Doing the job. The next part is actually doing the work. Everyone's creative process will be different here, but generally a client is going to want to see a sketched option first, maybe a couple of sketched options. For some people, the ideas come easy. For some, they don't. If you struggle at the start here, just ask the art director. That's what they're there for. You can ask them if uh, they want you to focus on any particular part of the article or if they had any specific ideas for the direction. They won't think any less of you for asking. When it comes to the ideas part, two heads are better than one. Once you've sent your sketch, you'll get some feedback. Maybe you'll send another edited sketch or maybe you'll incorporate that feedback in and progress onto the next color stage. The further you get along with the project, the more difficult it's going to be to edit, probably. Uh, so make sure you get approval on your idea early in the process before going too far. You shouldn't feel scared about communicating with the client regularly. If you want to share a work in progress to make sure you're on the right track, you should do it. But the more you do that, the more you're inviting the client to make changes. So just be aware of that. It makes sense to do it at the start of your career to make sure you don't get too far off track but you'll probably want to stop doing it once you're confident in your own abilities. You might have pre-agreed to something different, but let's assume you've agreed three rounds of feedback. You've done uh, one with a sketch, then you send your color version, maybe then there's a few comments, and then you send a more or less final illustration. The client at this point should only really be making minor comments and changes. If it's anything more than that, if they send major changes when you're nearly finished, you need to consider the time it's going to take and the time that's been potentially wasted. You might need to push back a little and say that's going to take some time and ask if they can offer an extension to the budget. Again, this is getting into territory that you might not feel comfortable in at first. You need to be flexible to some degree, but if you consider the feedback and whether it's reasonable at a late stage in the project, I think you'll be able to know if the client could have sent you this feedback earlier in the process. Sometimes there are genuine comments that come to light only after you're near the end of a project, but still, if it's a major change, your extra time on the project should be paid for. This kind of firm attitude doesn't come naturally to a lot of people, so it takes practice. All you're doing though is asking if there's more space in the budget. Maybe there is and maybe there isn't, but you won't know unless you ask. If there isn't, maybe you can offer a compromise that seems more reasonable to you. That's a very normal part of the process. Art directors expect it. It should just be part of the conversation. It's not an argument. But if you get a client that's making endless comments and changes, you really have to set a limit. If you agree three rounds of revisions up front, stick to it. Don't make a big deal out of, you know, a small extra comment at the end, but if you get a list of 10 things to change after the three rounds are up, they should really pay you more. If you're working for a magazine, the direction could be next to nothing and they leave it all up to you, or they provide you with a whole idea ready to go. You, you might not want to take responsibility for the whole concept without some input from the art director, or if they provide you with a fully formed idea, you might want the opportunity to make it your own a bit more. In either case, just have a conversation about it. Either ask for some ideas or offer your own. If you're working for an independent client or a bigger client, they will likely want to have more input. Independent clients can sometimes have trouble letting go of creative control and clients that are paying you a lot of money for important projects want to keep you on the right track. It can be frustrating when you feel like someone is micromanaging every creative decision you make. And it does happen from time to time. If they're paying you enough, maybe it doesn't matter to you. But you don't want to end up producing something that you're not happy with. So you should always feel free to give your opinions and ideas. Whether they take them or not is up to them. But if you have good ideas, hopefully they'll listen to them and respect you for it. You'll make more of a good impression by giving them an idea that they hadn't thought of than simply going along with what they want and being a yes man. Through this process, communicate often and honestly. Stick to your deadlines. If you can't, for whatever reason, be honest. The art director may have a few extra days for you to use. Delivery. Once you have approval on the illustration, send the final file to the client. Don't send layered Photoshop files or Illustrator files unless there's a legitimate reason that they need them. 
ask them what file type they need. For a magazine, it's usually a TIFF or a JPEG or a flattened PSD or a PDF. A magazine doesn't need your layered files most of the time. It only provides temptation for them to do something with it that you don't want them to. You should be the only person that edits your illustrations. If you're working with an independent client that you don't necessarily have much information about, you might want to send the invoice first and wait for confirmation of payment before you send the final file. And that comes down to trust. But if you've been stung before by a client that doesn't pay, that trust runs out pretty quickly. If this is a magazine, make sure you ask for your name to be credited with the illustration. Make sure they spell it right. Often clients will want you to send your invoice to a specific accounts department email address or a specific person. So ask about that. Then you make your invoice and you send it. And this should include your name, address, contact details, an invoice number, some bank details, uh, some details about the project, and the price. Some clients, usually the bigger companies, not magazines generally speaking, might send you a purchase order or a PO number. This is a number that's generated by their accounts department that relates to the project and the price of the project. If you get one of these, you'll need to add that number to your invoice too. If you don't, it probably won't get paid. You should ask if there's anything specific you need to add to the invoice. Some magazines might have a project number that needs to be added, or maybe it'll need to re reference a specific issue of the magazine. The more specific details your invoice has on it, the less likely it is to be confused with anything else or get lost somewhere. You should also add your payment terms to your invoice. 30 days is good, but depending on the client, you might be paid in two weeks or two months. You might want to ask the art director what their payment terms are so you know how long you have to wait. Mostly for UK companies it'll be 30 days, but some bigger companies and American companies have 45 day terms, 60 day terms, could even be longer. If it seems unreasonable to you, ask if they can change it. They probably won't, but you don't know if you don't ask. If the art director does not reply to your email when you send your invoice, check back in and make sure they received it. If they didn't, or if they forgot to send the invoice to the accounts department, you want to find out earlier rather than 30, 45, or 60 days later. It happens all the time. Nothing malicious about it, but things get missed and forgotten. It's your money, so make it your responsibility to make sure you get paid on time. As soon as I publish this, I know I'll think of something else that I've forgotten. Some clients make this process more difficult than others. If in doubt about anything, always ask. If you don't get a reply to something, follow up. If you aren't paid on time, hunt them down. If you're organized, you make it a lot easier for a client to work with you, which will hopefully help with getting them to work with you again in the future. Some art directors are extremely organized, some aren't just like anybody else. Don't be in a position where you have to rely on somebody else to be organized for you. Make yourself a checklist and get in the habit of ticking those boxes for every project that crosses your path. If you've got a checklist, you don't have to think about it. You can just go through the process automatically and use your brain for the creative part, the fun part. Hope this is useful. If I've forgotten anything, uh, stick it in the comments.